Tim with SI here. In this video, we're going to be discussing using the Lutron hardware to control the Screen Innovations screen and shade products using Troy. The first thing to remember when using Lutron with Troy, you have to have a fully commissioned Lutron system and you also have to have the Troy commissioned for motors, limits, presets, groups, that sort of thing so that we can actually move through the programming for this session. The first thing you're going to want to do with Troy and Lutron is you're going to go to the integrations table. So as you can see here, the Telnet client connection, the interface is disabled. So let's go ahead and turn it on. So in the integration settings, we come down to the Lutron client settings. So in here, we're going to enable. We're going to add an IP address. Uh, mine is 192.168.86.21. This is port 23. And then we need to add the Lutron integration username and password. So once we have these in place, we can submit it. Now, what I like to do is back on the system settings tab, I'd like to restart the processor before I move forward, just to make sure that that connection is good. Uh, and we can do that from the dashboard after reset. While we're waiting, uh, this video is just going to be used for using Lutron, uh, keypads, wall mounts, uh, Picos, specifically for control of the Screen Innovations screen and shade products. Usually takes about 15 to 20 seconds for it to restart uh, it will go back to the dashboard when complete the system has reset and we can see now that the connection is good between our process of the Troy and the Lutron hardware so now we can go to the integration table and we can start to capture our Lutron buttons so the first thing we're gonna want to do is go into the Telnet client table now in here there are a couple options one is create an action once you know the keypad number and the button numbers that you want to use, you can manually create your own buttons for functions. To get started, let's use the capture button. Now you do have to click the button for every Lutron button that you want to press. So in this case, I have two Picos. I'm only going to use the up, stop, and down button for each Pico. So I'm going to click capture button. I'm going to click my first Lutron button. I'm going to click it again. Click my second. Again with my third. And as you can see, these are all device number 11. This was the up, down, and stop for each one of my buttons. So I'm going to use a basic press function as my action. And then I'm going to set those functions here, up, stop, and down. Now, so that is up, stop, down for the three buttons on, on my Pico number one. So let's go ahead and add my second Pico device. I'm going to capture a button. I'm going to do my up, stop, and down functions again and so here we're just gonna do the same thing basic press functions now you can use uh, for action you can use the press the hold or the release function uh, those work exactly the same as the Lutron buttons do uh, so you know you can create a single on press trigger or a release so if you press and hold and release uh, also the press and hold for different functions so like I said I'm just gonna use the basic press and then I'm going to set my functions here to create my keypads. All right, so now I don't need command data when using just the up, stop, or down buttons. Uh, these are the generic commands. There is no command data to follow. Uh, so in this case, let's go ahead and choose my motors. So for device number 10, I'm going to use my first motor here. And then for my other keypad, I'm going to use shade three. All right, so now once I've got everything that I want in here, I can click accept edits and I can click commit action table to Troy. That actually pushes these triggers that I just built to the Troy and they are now live buttons in the system. So those Pico remotes should control my motors as is. Now to take one step back, let me explain the command data section. Uh, so in here, if I was to use any of these others, like go to percent, uh, go to IP, next IP, and previous IP. So if I'm to use go to percent, I can give it any number that I want to. I can say go to 33%. Uh, if it's go to IP, uh, and from the previous video, IP means intermittent position. And these are positions that you can create on each motor, and they're very specific. You can put it at any percentage, and then you can skip through if you create multiples. So just as an example, let's say if I had uh, four IPs on there, I could say go to IP number two. 
Uh, now, if I had those same four IPs on that motor, I could just say, hey, we're going to start at one. And then every time I hit that trigger, if I hit device number 10, button six, every press is going to move that to the next IP. So if I have four, it's simply going to cycle one, two, three, and four, and then back to one. Uh, same with previous, just going in the opposite direction. I don't want to store the changes that I just made, so I'll just hit clear edits. So now the configuration that I previously committed is in place and my Lutron controls now work with my screen innovation shade and screen devices. And this is all there is to the Lutron control portion with the Troy.